The following is video based on an article commissioned by Clean TV for Middle East expert Avi Lipkin to give in exactly 911 words what is going on in the Middle East. Here it is. With the defeat of the Ottoman Empire in World War I, the British and French colonial agenda called for the carving up of the former Turkish Empire and the creation of a number of Arab states that would be either under British or French colonial control. The French would get Syria with Lebanon torn away to create the new Christian state of Lebanon, while the British got Iraq and the Palestinian Mandate, which was later carved up into Transjordan and given over to the Hashemites, while the remaining third became the British Mandate of of Palestine. Whereas Transjordan and the Arab population of Palestine were virtually exclusively Sunni Muslims, Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon had diverse ethnic populations, which were in various ways in conflict with each other. Scant attention was paid to the drawing of logical borders, and instead a ruler was used on the map of the Middle East to create countries such as Syria and Iraq, which no longer exist today as they did before the onset of the so-called Arab Spring of February 2001. Both the French and British colonial powers used the principle of divide and conquer of proffering power to the minority Alawites in Syria as well as to the Arab Sunnis in Iraq. The Alawites represented a mere 10% of the population in Syria, while the Arab Sunnis in Iraq represented a mere 20% of the entire population of Iraq. In the West and Israel, governments are created based on moral coalition or consensus. But in the Middle East, the British and French decided to create pacts with minority groups that would remain totally independent and reliant on colonial powers and totally ruthless with the other ethnic groups. Power sharing and democracy were never an option. The Christians were granted a state in Lebanon, but in 1945 it was common knowledge that the Christians were now a minority, and the Shiites and the Sunnis fought over who would be preeminent. Today the Christians are about 28% in Lebanon, and Shiites about 40%. The Ba'ath parties of Syria and Iraq followed the same socialist, fascist type of ideology, but detested each other because in Syria, the Ba'ath party was dominated by the Shiite Alawites, while in Iraq it was dominated by the Sunnis. No consideration was ever given to the other groups not in the coalition with these minority to totalitarian leaderships, and so remained restive and were suppressed with complete brutality. The whole system began to unravel with the United States overthrow of Saddam Hussein in 2003 in Iraq. For George W. Bush, democracy meant the will of the people. Well, the Shiites, a 60% majority overall in Iraq, slaughtered for decades by Saddam, were now the majority and so power was transferred to them in 2003 with the overthrow of Saddam. The first thing they did was to disarm Saddam Hussein's Ba'ath Party membership and slaughter them, simply taking revenge for the hundreds of thousands of Shiites slaughtered by Saddam and the Ba'ath. Today, ISIS represents, among other things, a reorganized Sunni political, religious, and military system to quote-unquote protect the Sunnis from the Shiites, but is also indulged in the slaughtering of Sunnis who are not fanatic Muslims. Today, many Sunnis are rising up against this so-called state as well. In Syria, the Sunnis, who are about 80%, are divided as follows. About 30% support Bashar al-Assad's Shiite Alawite regime, together with the Alawites, who are about 10%, as well as the Christians and the Druze, which are about 10%. While the Sunni rebels are about 50%, so 50-50 is a prescription for a never-ending war. But the war will end in favor of the Sunnis simply because the Sunnis have more volunteers coming from all over the world to join ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Jabhat al-Nursa, Khorasan, as well as the Syrian Free Army, which is secular. Simply put, the soldiers of Bashar al-Assad are being decimated and cannot be replaced. Hezbollah of Lebanon, which has been helping Bashar al-Assad, is also bleeding profusely and so are the Iranian and Iraqi Shiite volunteers coming to Syria to help Bashar. A good parallel is the defeat of the Nazis in Europe and Japanese in World War II. Simply put, the United States outproduced the Axis powers while the Red Army of Russia had ten times as many soldiers as the Wehrmacht German armed forces. It was only a question of time. The old maps of Syria and Iraq no longer exist. Now we are seeing cantons developing representing the Kurdish, Alawite, Shiite, and Sunni populated areas, with each group protecting its territory. Conclusion for Israel, 
Israel owes the British and French nothing regarding the artificial borders of the Sykes-Picot Treaty of 1919. The borders of the 1947 UN Partition Plan no longer exist. The June 5, 1967 borders of Israel no longer exist and are not sacrosanct. In light of the present Middle East realities, there is no jurisdiction for any further Israeli withdrawals. Israel's fourth term, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, is completely right when he says that the conditions are not right to establish a Palestinian state because all the borders of the Middle East today are fluid, with old states disappearing and new cantons being created. Turkey and Iran may also break up along sectarian lines, and so we must watch this as well.